Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I'll be making cinnamon rolls from scratch. All right, I'm just gonna kick off this video by letting you guys know if I don't sound like I feel great, it's because I don't feel great. But these cinnamon rolls aren't gonna make themselves, so we're gonna get through this video together today. Now these cinnamon rolls are really fantastic. There's really four components. You've got the sweet dough itself, then there's the cinnamon filling, there's a cream cheese glaze, and the thing that's gonna top it all off is a smoked candy nut. Actually, a couple of different nuts, but we'll get to that. Let's start by making our dough. We're gonna start off by adding one cup of whole milk to our skillet over high heat. And we're gonna scald this milk. That means we're gonna bring it up to a boil and then turn it off. Now, the theory behind this is that when you scald the milk, you actually change the whey protein in that milk so that it doesn't inhibit the gluten development as you're making the dough. All right, so as soon as that foams up, we'll just turn this off. And I'm just gonna pour this right into the bowl of our stand mixer. At the same time, we're gonna add to that a third cup of white sugar. And just give this a quick whisk to help that sugar dissolve. Next, we're gonna add a half cup of unsalted butter to that hot milk. Now this isn't refrigerator cold, it's been sitting out for a little bit, but it is going to help bring the temperature of the milk down so that we can add the yeast. Now the yeast actually needs some heat to really develop, but if you put it in at any higher than about 110, you risk killing off that yeast and it becomes completely ineffective. So at this point, what we're trying to do is bring the temperature of that milk down to 110 degrees. All right, so now that we've dropped just below 110, now we can add our yeast. We're gonna sprinkle this dry active yeast, about nine grams or two and a half teaspoons, right over the top. I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. And then because it's pretty cold out here, I'm gonna take this inside and let this foam up probably for about 10 minutes. Now you can see how that yeast is really foamed up here after about 10 or 15 minutes. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and build the dough. Now I'm gonna add four cups of all-purpose flour. We get our dough hook attached. We'll start this off nice and slow. And as we start to form this shaggy dough, we're going to add two eggs, one at a time. And last, we need to add a couple of teaspoons of salt. Today we'll be using the whiskey barrel smoked salt. Now we just need to give this some time to form the dough so it's just gonna keep kneading and kneading for eight minutes. All right, time is up. I'm gonna get this out of the mixing bowl and into a resting bowl. You want to have a bowl that's lightly greased so your dough doesn't stick. And just right there in the center, we're going to cover this with plastic wrap. So we get that covered up with some plastic wrap, little pan spray on there as well. We're going to move this inside to a warmer spot where it can rise and double in size. Now there's a few things that we can do while we're waiting on that dough to rise, including making those smoked candied nuts and the cinnamon roll filling. All right, now we're gonna start off with a cup each of pecan pieces and chopped hazelnuts. And then what we're gonna do is add just enough maple syrup to submerge these. If you're measuring, it's about three quarters of a cup that it takes to get those submerged. And for now, that's it. We're gonna give them about half an hour to soak in that maple syrup and really get fully coated and saturated. Then we're gonna move on. But in the meantime, we can put together that cinnamon roll filling. Now for the filling, it's very simple, four ingredients. We're gonna have a stick of butter, three quarter cup brown sugar, one quarter cup maple syrup, and three tablespoons of cinnamon. Make sure that butter is at room temperature, nice and soft. That'll make this mixing process much easier. And that just comes right together, should form a nice paste, and you'll just mix it around until you don't see any more streaks of butter in there. And that mixture, you wanna keep it room temperature so it's easily spreadable once we roll out the dough. All right, now that these have soaked for a while, we're gonna pour off some of that excess 
maple syrup in there with our uh, hazelnuts and our pecans. And then the nuts will transfer to a mixing bowl. And we're gonna add to the nuts a half cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of white sugar, and a teaspoon each of cinnamon and that whiskey barrel smoked salt. Now what we've done by soaking these nuts in the maple syrup, one, we've added that maple flavor, but we've given the sugars and the seasoning something to stick to now. So we're looking to get fully coated on here and then we'll transfer to our sheet pan. Spread that out into a nice even layer, leaving some gaps here and there. And this is ready to go onto the smoker. We've got the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill running at 250 degrees set up for smoking. We're gonna place these right here on the second shelf. Now to really punch up the smoke flavor, I'm gonna add an amazing tube smoker with some cherry pellets in here. And we'll light this up. Once this gets going, it's gonna offer even more smoke flavor for our smoke candied nuts. Well, it's been about an hour here and you can see that we're starting to get dried out. These are a little bit sticky, but mostly dried. So at this point, we're gonna pull these off the grill. Well, it's been about two to two and a half hours now that our dough has been rising. It's puffed up really nicely. So we're ready to fold it up and roll it out. I think that smell of rising bread might be one of my favorite smells in the world, even through this cold. You get a nice whiff of that. I'm gonna start by putting some flour down on our work surface. Turn out our dough. Now we're gonna create some layers and sort of form a shape here by pressing this down, folding it over into thirds, and then doing that one more time. Oh, it's nice and tender, this dough right here. So now we've got a good rectangle shape to work with. What we're looking to do is roll this out to about 16 inches this way by about 20 inches this way, and then we're gonna get a dozen of these cinnamon rolls out of this piece of dough. Now since we've folded this and worked it a little bit, you can see that this wants to pull back a little bit at the edges. If that's pulling back too much and you're working this too hard, you just want to throw some plastic on this, let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and it'll relax in that time. Now we're going to take our cinnamon filling and just place it right here on the dough and spread it out nice and thin. We're going to leave a strip on this side with no cinnamon filling and that's what we're going to tuck underneath each roll as the base of the roll. I hear they make tools for spreading stuff out like this, but uh, God gave me these hands to use just as well. Now starting at the end closest to me, we're gonna fold this over and just begin rolling to the other side. There we go, nice tight log. From here, we're gonna slice our cinnamon rolls. All right, these ends are gonna be lost here. And now we'll go ahead and mark about our halfway point. Gotta get six out of each one of those. Let's try to do that as even as possible. Grab yourself a nice sharp knife so you're not tearing through this or stretching anything out. Now 
There we go. And there's a couple different ways you can go about baking your cinnamon rolls. You can either pack them in nice and tight in a cast iron skillet like we're going to do today so that everything proofs together, bakes together, lots of soft gooey stuff on the inside. Or you can place them separately farther apart on a sheet pan so you get a crust all the way around the outside. We're gonna go with the cast iron skillet method today. So here I have a large eight inch cast iron skillet, we greased it up. As you can see, we're taking that flap without the cinnamon on it, just placing that underneath. We're just gonna kinda line the perimeter here with these cinnamon rolls. We get a half dozen in this eight inch skillet. And we need these things to puff back up once again. So I'm gonna take that plastic wrap with the pan spray on it. And we're just gonna go place this in a warm spot, hopefully for about 30 to 60 minutes before it's ready. Obviously this recipe makes a dozen cinnamon rolls, but we're only baking six in this first batch. The cool thing about this is how often do you need a dozen cinnamon rolls? I mean, it's every once in a while, but a lot of times I'm just feeding the four of my family and six is plenty. So throw the rest of those into a zip top bag and put them in the freezer. All you have to do next time you want to bake them, pull them out, let them proof up. Well, our cinnamon rolls are fully proof now. It took a little bit longer than I was expecting, probably due to all this cold weather that's going on and working these outside here in the cold. Your time will always vary, whether it's in your kitchen or someone else's kitchen, everything's a little bit different. So don't look to a timeline too specific. You really just want to react to how the dough looks and how the dough feels. At this point though, we're ready to get these on the grill. Now we've turned the grill up to 350 degrees at a baking temperature. You can see how these have really filled out and proofed into one another. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now if you wanted to, you could mix up an egg wash to brush on the top of these to give them a nice shine, a bit of sheen on the outside. But I'm not too worried about that because we're going to be making a cream cheese glaze to put over the top. So we're really not gonna see a lot of that bread. We're going back into the bowl, of the stand mixer with one stick of butter. Obviously that's some room temperature softened butter. And four ounces or one half cup of softened cream cheese. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And two cups of powdered sugar. All right, we're gonna get the whisk attachment on there and get this going over medium speed. Now as the mixture smooths out, you'll want to scrape down the sides to make sure that you incorporate any little bits that haven't been worked in there yet. At this point, this is a little bit of a fluffier frosting. It's got a lot of body to it. So if you want to knock it down a little bit so it's more of a glazed consistency, you can just take a little bit of cream or milk and that'll kind of thin it out. But well, that's good to go, and that'll melt really nicely on the top of those cinnamon rolls. Well, it's been about 40 minutes, and our cinnamon rolls are looking really nice. Let's take a peek. We've got some nice browning around the edges here. Firm, but not too firm all the way to the center. And with these still hot, I'm gonna spread this glaze, our frosting, over the top and let it melt in. and then just top it all off with those candied nuts, our pecans and hazelnuts. Perfect little smoky crunch to the top there. All right, I'm gonna pull one out of here. Now let's dig in. so tender and doughy and delicious, just slightly smoky. There's no better time to dig into one of these than straight off the grill, that's for sure. I love the sweetness and the crunch from those candied nuts on top, really great. That's a solid cinnamon roll. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. 
you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.